Let's continue building the Rick and Morty app series. Before diving in, make sure you hit that like button down below, comment hello for the algorithm, and let's continue. So in the last video, we started talking about and building out the collection view layout for the episode detail screen. And I had mentioned how we're gonna have two different section types for info and characters. In this video, what we're gonna do is we're going to build those view models for those respective sections. So that is going to happen in our view models folder for the view model here. And here we have the section type enum that we defined. So information, we had created a new struct here, which has basically a title and value. And then for characters, we're just gonna use the prior existing RM character collection view cell view model. So once we actually have set up our data tuple, we have all the information we need to create the view models. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is say create view models. And let me actually go ahead and call this create cell view models to be more specific. And what I'll go ahead and do is on this function here, and we're gonna put it in private, on this function here, we're gonna go ahead and say, let me delete this public for now, we'll add it back if we need it. We'll say we actually want to take this data tuple and construct these sections, the thing that we made private set here accordingly. So let's actually do that. So sections is going to be an array where the first, in, uh, first section will be information. And for this, we wanna create a few different view models. Now, we'll just do dot init so we get the constructor here. And let's actually take a look at what we wanna do. Well, we wanna get the characters and episodes out of our data tuple. So I'll say episode here will be our data tuple dot. And you can do dot one or dot zero here. Now, if you wanna make it you know, a little better name, we can actually go ahead and do the following. We can go ahead and say, this is the episode here. These are the characters here. And if you try to compile, you're gonna see we actually have some issues. Well, these issues here, well, make sense. Let's just toss in a string so it doesn't yell at me here. But more interesting is we don't wanna say dot one now. We wanna say this is dot episode. Data tuple is in fact uh, nullable. So what I will go ahead and do here is that we will unwrap it. We're gonna say this is data tuple. And if we actually come down to where we use the dispatch group to assign the uh, data tuple here, we can actually go ahead and if I'm not mistaken, we can actually say episode is episode and characters is characters. And I believe it lets me do that. It's just yelling at me because I no longer need the question mark here since we did in fact unwrap this. And looks like I've got an else typo here. Let me go ahead and fix that. And we are in good shape. So now what we can do is on this episode, I can actually start pulling data out. So for example, if I wanna get for the episode, the episode's name, we can say that the title is, let me just call it episode name, and we can create a few of these. So let me go ahead and I think there's three that I want. The next one I want is air date, and here we want the episode dot, let's see what else is on here. We don't want the URL, maybe we do want the dot .episode, and this will be something like, you know, season zero, episode one. And here we'll just call this episode, and here this will be air dates, and maybe we'll have a fourth one in here, and that one will be created, and this, uh, this date is basically when this record was inserted into the database that is, uh, you know, uh, backing the API. Now the next thing we wanna do is particularly simple. So we already know we have the characters here, so we can actually go ahead and say that this is data tuple.characters. And I'm gonna go ahead and create another section here. It's gonna be characters. And we can actually go ahead and map our character models to these uh, view models. So we, we're gonna say characters, and let's go ahead and say compact map we are going to return a RM character collection view cell view model. And this gets created with a character name, a character status, as well as a character uh, image URL here. So let's actually go ahead and do that. We can say $0.name. We can go ahead and say $0.status. And this is gonna be a URL with $0.image. Now this $0 is just character. So if you want it to be um, a little more expressive, we can actually say character in. 
And we can go ahead and do that. I'm also going to just line break all of this so we have improved readability. And if I'm not mistaken, we should be good to go. Those errors should go away. And we now have our view models. Now that we have our view models here, and actually we've assigned it to sections, let me actually rename this to cell view models. Go ahead and do that, cell view models. Alrighty, and then down here, we want to actually, rather up here, we want to actually say via the delegate that we finally actually did fetch the episode details. So now our view knows, which in this case is our uh, actual delegate and data source for this collection view. And now we can actually go ahead and say that, hey, we want you to reload your data. So in this function, we've actually told the detail view, go ahead and configure yourself with the view model. We come into here and we are assigning this view model. And once we do that, we say, okay, the collection view, we wanna unhide it. Uh, we also wanna animate it in, but the other thing we're gonna go ahead and do is say reload data. And when we say reload data, what will happen is we want all of these functions to be re-triggered, right? So let's actually implement these instead of these hard-coded values that we previously had used. So for number of sections, we're gonna say view model. And if I'm not mistaken, this is in fact nullable. Is it nullable? Yes, it is indeed nullable. So here I can go ahead and actually say uh, cell view model dot count, otherwise we have zero. Uh, respectively, what we want to go ahead and do is in the number of items per section, I'm gonna unwrap it so it makes our life a little easier. If we don't have the view model, we'll just return zero. But in this case, we are going to switch on the view model here, and there are two types of sections. There is information. Let's go ahead and find it. So there is, let's see, we have a view model here. What we want to actually switch on is the cell view models. So let's go ahead and say cell view models, and this will actually give us the section type. And the way, let's actually make this sections. And the way we get the section type is by saying at the uh, nth position. So this argument takes in a, or this function takes in a section integer argument. And we're gonna actually switch on the section type. And by doing so, we know that we have this information section and we have inbound view models in here. So what we'll return here is view models.count. And respectively, we also have the uh, section for characters. Now let's see why this is yelling at me. So we have view models, should not be yelling at me about this. Let's see why that is. I think I've got a typo somewhere in here perhaps. I'll just return zero for the time being. Let's see, let's get this built out. So this will be characters. And let's go ahead and see. So we want this to be let view models as well. And we're just gonna return zero here. Let's go ahead and build, make sure it's not yelling at me. So it is yelling at me because we want to actually return this. We're gonna return this.count and this.count as well. And it looks like for some reason the autocomplete is kind of freaking out here. So sometimes the Xcode needs a relaunch. So let me actually close Xcode here and we're gonna open it up again because it's not giving me syntax highlight and I've had Xcode open for like weeks now. So if you ever have any weird issues like that, chances are Xcode is just being Xcode. So just try to reopen it and it should solve your problems. Let's jump back to the episode detail view. We'll compile here and it looks like it's still not cooperating, but I digress. It is indeed working, at least the autocomplete is working now. So what we are doing is we're getting the sections off the view model, we're unwrapping them because the, sec the view model is optional. We get the section type and based on the type, we're gonna return how many items should be in that section. So I think it's looking pretty good um, in here. Now we did go ahead and uh, talk about which cells we're going to use. So let's actually uh, register the appropriate cells. So one of them is an RM episode info collection view cell. And let's see if we added an identifier on here. We did not. So we are going to add a cell identifier and this is what we're gonna register the cell with. We'll also go ahead and override the uh, initializer here and just set a uh, background color so we can temporarily at least see it when it's dequeued. We're also going to say init with coder. We're going to want to do prepare for reuse. And we're also going to want a way to configure this 
with the respective view model, which is RM episode info collection view cell view model, like so. So let's swipe back and let's use the proper identifier here. All right, so that one there is registered. Let me go ahead and copy and paste it. And the other cell we're gonna work with is the RM character collection view uh, cell. So let's make sure I find the proper one there. And this one already we've used, so it should have a cell identifier on it, which it in fact does. And now what we're gonna actually go ahead and do is the following. I'm gonna actually steal all of this jazz in here, including the switch. And in the cell for index path or cell for item, what we are gonna do in here is just paste that. If we don't have a view model, something is like super duper screwed up. So what I'll go ahead and do is just fatal error. So no view model. We should not be coming into here because if we don't have a view model, we're gonna say there's zero uh, cells and then there's also zero sections. So this should never get hit. And if it does, we'll take care of it accordingly. And now that we have this, we need to say that give me the section at the index path dot section, which is an integer. And once we have that, we can dequeue and return the appropriate cell. So let me do the first one here. We have these view models here, so we wanna get the cell view model. So the cell view model will be the nth element in this collection, and that nth element is notated as index row like that. And let's go ahead and dequeue the appropriate uh, cell. So for the information cell, we had created this new one here. This is going to be a RM episode info collection view cell dot cell identifier. We also want to cast it as the appropriate type because that's how we'll be able to access its API. And once we've done that, we can actually say cell.configure with cell view model. And you can actually cheat and copy and paste all of this. And the only thing that's going to change is the type. So this is going to be a character collection view cell now. And we should actually be good to go. So let's go ahead and give this a build and run. And once we have some data, we should see something. It might not be, it might not look correct, but we should in fact see something. And let's see, it looks like our app is launching super duper slow. Let's see why that is. Okay, there it is. I'm gonna come over here, nothing on the console. We'll click this and it looks like we've got four uh, cells up here for the info section and then we have really distorted character cells down here. And the reason these are super duper distorted is because we need to create appropriate layouts for both of these sections. And right now we're just returning the layout for um, the information cell. So what we'll actually end up doing in here is we are going to say that for the uh, section type, we will return the appropriate uh, layout. So this will be, let's say, the default layout. So we'll say there's a function create info layout, and this will return this here. And what I'll go ahead and do is I'll say once again, guard let uh, sections will be our view model dot cell view models. And if we don't have it, we're just gonna default to this one here. But if we do have it, we are going to go ahead and switch based on the index. And in the information case, we will return this. And in the characters case, and it might be character singular, we're gonna create a new function that's going to be create character layout and i'll actually do it right now since we can just copy and paste and uh, tweak as needed so here this will be create character layout the width and height will be the same here the group that we are going to create let me actually go ahead and make this a, a horizontal group meaning we're going to put two things side by side like so the width is going to be 0 0.5, and the height here, I guess we can go ahead and hard code it. Let's try something like 240, and let's see what that looks like. Section is perfectly fine for now. Eventually, we'll want some margin. Let's see why this is yelling at me, because character doesn't exist. All right, so I did, in fact, call it characters. 
So let's come into here and see what that looks like. So cool, it looks like we have this looking good. This card is looking better now as well, but we want two columns. So what gives here? Something is strange. So let's see what is actually strange. Let me see, the width of this item, we're saying fractional width. We actually want this to be 50%. We want our group to be 100%. And let's actually make this vertical. And truth be told, I always forget how these layouts work, so you gotta play with it a little bit, but let's see what this looks like. So this is also not correct, so let me see why that is. What I'm gonna actually do is let's jump into the uh, character detail view model, and let's take a look at what the heck we did here. For the character detail view model, specifically what we care about is the info section. Looks like we did 0 0.5 and 1 here, which is correct. We did one here, 150, which is also correct. So this actually looks very similar to what we actually just built out in our uh, character, rather episode detail view. So let me actually copy and paste this layout from over there. Let's go ahead and build and run and let's see what this looks like. And we might need to adjust accordingly. Okay, so we definitely have two columns now. And let's see why this looks super off. So we have some insets defined, which I think look kind of small. So we'll probably want to increase this a smidge. The width of an item is 50%. The height is 100% of its uh, underlying group. This is a fractional width 100%. Maybe the height of this, we want this to be like 270 or 260. We have two items in here. Let's go ahead and do 10 on the left. We'll do 10 on the right. And we also want to do maybe five on the bottom and five on the top. So let's go ahead and give this a run. Those will be the kind of margin insets for each item. And cool, look at that. It looks actually looking a whole lot better now. So we've got our cells here. We have not designed this uh, red cell up here, but essentially we're going to want, you know, maybe uh, a label at the top and a label below it. Or maybe we'll do the title on the left here and the results, kind of the value on the right. But that cell actually is already uh, created. We have tossed it into our views here. We're going to jump into here. And it's actually this one right here where we're setting an obnoxious you know, background color. So let's at least uh, change the background color here. And let me do set up layer. We're going to create a function and just round the corners so everything looks nice. So we'll say private func set up layer. Layer dot corner radius is what I'm looking for. We'll make it eight and layer dot masks to bounds. We'll make it true. And maybe we'll even give it like a border width. I'll make it one and we'll give it a border color. And we're going to say UI color secondary label, which is kind of like a light uh, label color. So label in dark mode would be white and in light mode would be black. So this just gives you a lighter uh, variant of that. So let's go ahead and uh, give this a build and run and let's see what that cell looks like. And then in the next video, we'll actually design that cell. So let's go ahead and take a look at our episode. All right, it looks pretty cool. So we have uh, this cell here, got some nice rounded corners. We've got all the characters here in this particular uh, episode and these should actually vary between episodes. So let me actually scroll down here and pick some random episode. I imagine Rick and Morty will be in all of them because the show is called Rick and Morty. But cool, it looks like in this case we have an odd number and the, the cells are actually still looking pretty pretty nice. So we are definitely rendering this appropriately. And yeah, in the next video, we'll go ahead and build out these cells and wrap up the screen. So drop a like before clicking to the next one. Subscribe if you haven't done so and you've been enjoying this series. And I'll see you in the next part.